It's being six o'clock. Let's call our meeting to order for the Soquel Creek Water District. Um, <clears throat> even though Dr. LaHue is listed on the front page as being a dial-in uh, attendee, he actually will not be dialing in, so it'll just be the four of us here that you see. So a roll call would show the four of us. Um, and also the closed session mentioned as item number seven will not occur. So because it's on the agenda, people can speak publicly on it for three minutes. Oh, but we're not having the We're not having the okay. closed session. Okay. Um, so let's get started. We have a public hearing. Whose item is this? I'm going to be presenting this item. Okay. Um, so as you recall, uh, at our December 17th meeting, the um, Board of Directors took action to increase its uh, board member compensation. Um, and as promised in that memo that I presented in December, um, we have to bring back some additional information for um, updating our um, the ordinance for board compensation and updating our policy, which is done through uh, resolution. And so presented to you tonight in this um, uh, packet and as part of the public hearing um, is that uh, updated ordinance um, and the updated resolution to update the policy. So if there's any questions, the, the action was taken and approved, so there's no change in that. Right. Any board questions? I'll just offer the comment. I'm sorry for all the brouhaha since I introduced that whole issue at this particular time. So I'm sorry for the extra trouble. <laughs> but um, I'm glad it's yeah, that part of it. Yeah, there hasn't been an increase to board compensation in about 10 years or so. Um, and so sometimes those processes, we need to revisit them. And so this is uh, just making sure that we do that as promised when, when we when you make, took the action in December. I wanted to question the page 19, Schedule A. It's a list of organizations and mentions the Basin Implementation Group, which no longer exists, the Basin Advisory Group, which also no longer exists, and the SCWD2 Desalination Task Force, which mm -hmm. way, way doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not list the MGA, which does exist and for which we are participants in, so that might be added. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, I will open the public hearing. On the matter of board compensation, I noticed looking at what was purportedly sent to me and then looking tonight on the only copy you have, hiding it from the public, uh, the agenda items, uh, there's no indication of what your compensation has been and what it will be. It's not there at page three. So I'd like you to, before you proceed further, tell me what the compensation is now and tell me what's proposed, Miss. 160 $200. $200 a meeting? Why isn't 160 adequate? If you're serving the public, why isn't that more than adequate? Well, even so, it's probably below. Why shouldn't you serve for no compensation if you really care about your rate payers? Yeah, this is public comment. Well, my public comment is I don't think you should be paid anything. You should invite people in the public to, to be on your board, <laughs> presuming it's necessary, um, at, no, at no reimbursement. And if you are going to provide any reimbursement, it shouldn't be increased a dime. Inflation hasn't impacted your capacity. The cost of gasoline hasn't impacted your capacity to attend and participate. No. In the interest of all 15, 16,000 ratepayers, whom you, you show some loyalty to and some fiduciary accountability to, to how you spend and waste their money by the hundreds of thousands, you shouldn't increase your compensation at all. Why don't you show some discipline, some fiscal restraint, some accountability for the millions of dollars you're entrusted with by your ratepayers, you and your senior staff? Does anyone else wish to address us on this item? <coughs> You're already getting 160 for every meeting. Uh, being on the board at Central Fire for quite a while, uh, you know, their increase could only be allowed $5. And you're now getting 40. And I'm not sure, I'm going to have to go back. I didn't know this was going to be on the agenda until I just saw it tonight. I am going to look into this 
because if they said that they could no longer, they could not raise any more than five dollars. That's so that, that's our situation as well. You can only raise it five dollars, but anything you don't use, you can do it in the future. So we could raise it, I think, over a hundred dollars if we wanted to. Well, if you take a look at the the agenda um, items from the December seventeenth meeting, President Daniels, you'll see the schedule, I know. and on that schedule is where the it lists the so annual compensation. Yeah, it's it's on the it's on the public website. What I'm saying is, though, you know, six o'clock is difficult for a lot of us to attend. Uh, I just barely made it. We have to come from Santa Cruz, and to get here at six, I missed the last meeting you had because, uh, and I'm sure people would want to know about this. And I do have board members that have served on the board at Central, um, but I, I'm going to look into this a little further. And I apologize for not being at the last meeting, but I didn't get home till or even halfway here until quarter after six, and it was actually too late to be here. So six o'clock is really difficult, but that's not a, what I'm talking about. I am gonna look into this, and I did not see the December. I should have gone on it, and I apologize I didn't, but I'll be looking on it. And just to be clear, this is the <coughs> the advertisement, right, Emma, that was published in the uh, Sentinel? Mm -hmm. is, this, is this correct? Okay, I just wanna make, make it aware that we did do our public noticing. So anyone else wish to address us on this item? Seeing no one, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, I'll move. And I'll oh. second. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we close yeah. the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wait a minute, we have to, oh, we have to roll call, roll please. Call. Yeah. <coughs> Vice President Lather? Here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniel? Yes. So we are discussing the item now. Any comments? Well, I spend quite a bit of time studying the packets. They're hundreds of pages long. We've heard members of the public complain about it. And mm -hmm. you know, basically, we get paid about $10 an hour. Oh, not even that. <laughs> and given the so time. I don't have a problem with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was the one who introduced it, and it was expressly because there hadn't been any kind of an increase in. 10 years of returns. I didn't know it was even that much. And so the actual increase is modest, and especially in view of all the other things we do for the district on a volunteer basis that we are not reimbursed. We're only reimbursed for the meetings that we attend, not any of the other ancillary stuff we do for the, for the district. So it's, uh, I appreciate that people object to even that, but that is what we have here. Okay. Yeah, I once sat down and figured out it was it was something like minimum wage. You know, when you include the time, it you, you sometimes these meetings have gone to you know midnight even that mm -hmm. we've been here, and uh, indeed looking at a 200, 300 page packet that we've sometimes had, uh, spending the time necessary to read that carefully. Nine hundred we had. Well, yes, yeah. we've had one of those. Uh, that it's it's you know, minimum wage or below, typically. Um, so I think it's not un unreasonable. So that being the case, um, we can now uh, make two motions to approve ordinance 20-1 and then 20-3. Do I hear any motions? Um, I'll move to approve both resolutions. Okay. And I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniel? Yes. Okay, so that's the public hearing. We move now to the consent agenda. There are three items on the consent agenda. Anyone want to take anything off the consent agenda? Anyone in the public? Oh, wish to I, I don't know if I have to recuse myself. I wasn't at the January 21st, 2020 meeting, and I merely uh, proofed the minutes uh, to catch up on mm -hmm. what was going on. I can't really vote to approve the meeting. Um, so the if the board would like, you can actually leave that on the consent <coughs> calendar, um, and then you can just <coughs> abstain from that item and then vote on the balance. Okay. Yeah. That's what I do. I abstain. Now that's... Are you going to do the same? Or <coughs> I was there at that meeting. You were, okay, so we'd have three votes. 
because as in, in this situation, we have to have three votes uh, for things. 6.2 and 6.3, I want to address, please. No, that's no, not, not consent. Yet. That's not yet. consent agenda, agenda is 3.1, 3.2, 3 3.3. So you, those are going to be heard. Your anyway. planning calendar is of the only single copy on the planet to the public that's available back there? I believe back there. Let me take a moment to look at it. Keep the clock going, folks. Uh, oh, is it open now? Can you hear that? Are you hearing me okay? Can you hear this okay? Okay, thank you. There's nothing down until the mic. Maybe pull the mic. Is that better? That's better, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Try again. Uh, are you adjusting Taj one, two, three testing? Uh, is that better? That's way better. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I think it was a little low. You never know if they adjust it. Tracy, do you have that clock? Yep, okay, we're waiting. We started to talk about some things. Somewhat duplicated what's on the other items from what I could read. Okay. I have no comment on your agenda, but I have comment on the item. Okay. Well, so uh, I'll make the motion if to approve all the consent items. Okay. Thank you. Second. We have a second. Yeah. Roll call, please. Vice President Lather. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen. Abstain on 3.1 and <coughs> yes on the rest. And President Daniel. Yes. Okay, we now go to oral and written communications. So everyone, you can speak on any item not on tonight's agenda. You have three minutes. Okay, I believe, you know, I believe you all got the packet that I dropped off at the, the office yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, you read my first letter, and I'm very concerned about all of these issues, especially the tier number two. Uh, it's totally unfair. Uh, the, the increases are unbelievable. Most of us cannot afford what it's gone to. Uh, I'm not going to go over because you've already got it and read it. On my second page, there was somebody was asked about did this make this tier two make the water increase hard for difficult for people to pay? The answer was no, it does not. This was your answer. I also have that in your packet. You can read what was replied. It said no. They're just using more water. That is a ridiculous statement. This is how lost you are with the people that you serve. You're not talking to them. Get on neighborhood Aptos and find out what's really going on in your area, okay? On this next one, there was one on uh, neighborhood Aptos, and she put on there, I don't know what people are talking about, and I'm not gonna say it. She said, I have a husband myself, my teenager. We take two showers a day. She's putting this all on there, and I said, you know, if you're smart, you won't post this because if you're getting that low bill, consider yourself very lucky because there's many of us that are not. Just the other day when we all got our second bill, which was astronomical, I think a little more than 9% increase, she puts down, oh, got my bill today. Only had to pay, went down $46. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, lady, you're really asking for a problem. Now, this is actually what's been on Neighborhood Aptos, which I think should go to. On the next pages, I've given you the bills, my January bill, was 216.95. The bill I just received is $254.90. So tell me it's not an increase. Tell me it's not a hardship. I'm now paying more for my water than my PG&E. There are five adults that live in our house. You've made no accommodations for them, for people, but there's two to five. And I think that has to be done. You said you're going to restructure. It hasn't been done. This is absolutely ridiculous. Why isn't businesses paying the same amount that we are? I've talked to people in Santa Cruz, I've seen their <clears throat> water bills. They just can't believe what we're paying for water. Something is wrong with Tier 2. It has to be restructured. This is a problem. People can't afford to pay this. Thank you. Thank you. So, Director Daniels, um, if you want, we can discuss this a little bit. I asked the uh, customer if they'd like to have a personal meeting 
or discussing at the meeting, and I think she wanted to bring this up at the meeting. So uh, the invitation to meet with us uh, personally is still out there. So a couple things. Here's the Aptosia website. You can see somebody says their bill's going down there, but I think more important is there may be some um, misunderstanding. There also, we suspect there potentially could be a leak, and we'll, we'll go through that. So maybe, and, and, and this, is, this is the key that I want to make sure that we're, we're, you understand, um, is that this scale over here is adjustable. Look, can you see the screen? The scale on the left? Okay. So this is your water bill that you sent to us, and you can see the, the bar on the left is usually lower on the bar on the right. The bar on the right is your water usage. So if you look at the last couple bills, your water usage has gone up double to what it was. So that's, that's the, one of the primary drivers for your, your increasing your bill. But what I want to make sure is, is clear is that this scale, because I, I interpret it maybe incorrectly, and please you know, assure me if I'm, I'm wrong, that because this bars to the top, the scale's different than this scale here or this scale down here. Mm -hmm. yep. So that doesn't mean all the bells are similar if the, um, and there's different costs. Like this one's $70. Uh, even though the bars are near the top, there's a lot less uh, gallons over here on the left side. So I just want to make sure that we are absolutely clear on that. But also, you have an interesting water use where it goes down in the summertime and up more in the winter months. So we would love to have the opportunity to come out. We know you had a leak adjustment and help you with that. Maybe it wasn't um, fully realized or fixed and, uh, and we're curious to why this, this pattern, it's unusual to see this. So we extend that offer to, to meet with you. We appreciate the um, communication. And, and Tracy, I mean, uh, Leslie, did you want to add anything to that? Well, yeah, and I believe Ms. Miller was given a um, leak adjustment for her July and August bills, I believe, um, for the high water use this summer, but it doesn't look as though that's abated. Um, it, it looks like something is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, if there was a repair affected or not. And uh, if that was something that would carry you above tier one, then it's continuing. So. Typically, typically <coughs> her water use has historically been around five or six units a month, mm -hmm. um, and it's now running 10 to 12 units a month. Ah, okay. Um, so the the increase in the bill is is due to doubling of the, usage. Of the water use. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I had um, I had a running toilet, and my bill was the same amount. So it could be, and it wasn't running all the time. And so it could be something as, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we're, we're always uh, happy. So anyone else wish to address this? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. We have no reports, that's item five. Under administrative business, there are no will serves. So we go to item 6.2, consideration of board procedure modifications to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of board meetings. Yeah, so I'm going to take this one. Uh, the board asked us to bring a couple items back, and as we do about every six months to a year, we look at our processes, especially having the, uh, bringing on new legal counsel, new eyes, fresh eyes there, uh, input from customers on ways we might be able to improve uh, what we're doing and basically save the um, ratepayers money in the long run. So that's what this memo is about. And it, it focuses on several uh, items, and we'll just um, go through them here. I'm doing two computers, so I'm kind of losing my bearings here. So the first one was uh, the review of the consent items. And you wanted to uh, ex expressly should, what do other agencies do, and, and what are your options that this board could do and so we researched it and we, we went out to our local agencies here, the city of Santa Cruz and the county, and what they do is only permit members of the governing body to uh, request that the chair or the board president pull the items. And the way the public gets input to that is they allow the public to contact their representatives 
beforehand, before the meeting via email, if they're looking at the packet or whatever, or uh, whatever their means of communication to that board member is or chair or council members and uh, request a poll. And then it's at the discretion of the board um, at, the, at the meeting whether they pull the item off consent for consideration. Uh, and I think uh, Josh has indicated that the agencies you're involved with is this kind of a BMP. Yeah, um, it's uh, pretty standard just to have staff and, and the board handle uh, agenda items being pulled. And so, and Emma, you had a lot of input on this one, so if you want to chime in, please do. Now, what we realize, if the board did want to go in that direction, kind of what the other agencies do, uh, what you would want to do is reorder the, the process that you currently have so that people would have an, still an opportunity to comment on items that weren't pulled off the agenda, off the consent agenda. So what, what we've proposed here is the uh, the board would start with a call to order, a roll call, public hearing, and then uh, announcement by board members to remove any items or not. And so after that, the, uh, here it is on here. And I assume that that item four is um, something the public could comment on since it's a listed agenda item, right? Yes, if it so was they structured that way, yes. So even yeah. if they didn't ask anyone beforehand, they could ask someone to pull it yes. during that item. Yes. yes. Yeah, now most a the agencies I've observed have not done that, but I suppose that's an option. Where it comes into play for the public, if an item is not pulled, if it's pulled, of course, it, the public can comment on it. And we do suggest putting that item at the back of the agenda at the end, just because these are generally routine items that don't require the, the <coughs> brain power, if you will, of the major items. They're, mm. they're kind of routine, mm. so we save them for last. But, um, but if an item does stay on there and it's not pulled, then they would have the opportunity to comment on uh, oral communications. So it is set up to expressly allow uh, communication, whether an item's pulled or not, I guess you could say. So uh, I'm gonna run through these and then we'll come back and visit them. Um, that one, uh, I think is, is, I capture that right, Emma? Okay, so the next item of consideration, there are like four items here, is review of oral communications. So the this is what our current policy is right here. And we have laid out, I'm trying to get these up here for you, um, several options. Right now, we the board basically allows up to three minutes for public comment on each item. Of course, as it states in our guidelines on the agenda, if it's, if it's packed house, trying to give everybody equal opportunity, you can scale that back, and that would still apply. But for the general comment period, there's, there's a couple options that we've uh, identified here, either come up with or what other agencies do. So again, we went reached out to our local agencies, and the city of Santa Cruz allows up to two minutes per public comment. Sometimes they reduce that. The county is two to three minutes. Um, so that's option one. You can reduce down uh, to, two, to uh, two minutes per item. Uh, I, option two is you could uh, allow public members the opportunity to speak for three minutes on their first public comment and two minutes on any subsequent. So kind of a hybrid, if you will. Um, the item three is, or option three is, allow the public to comment up to four on any four agenda items. And the city of Sacramento has taken this approach. Um, so we wanted to put that out there for you also. So staff, you know, often on policy items, we come together as a management team and, and look at this and try to put forth our best recommendation for you. And after all things considered, and we bounced around a little bit, we thought um, up to two items, I mean, two minutes per item was, was our recommendation. And we liked the three minutes at the first and then two minutes subsequently, but logistically, we weren't sure. If the board's interested in that, I suppose we could trial that and see how it, how it pans out. So anyway, that's, that's the uh, second item on consideration on these policy. And then review of uh, board packet distribution. So as you know, we make the uh, board packet available um, Viva um, 
the internet, it's posted on our website. The, if people want a copy, they can uh, ask us, we'll, we'll reproduce a copy. It, it costs them right now, uh, what, what is it, 15 cents a page or 25%, 25 cents a double-sided page. Um, and that's about in the middle of the, of the agencies we surveyed. We try not to, it's just, that's the, our cost, we figure, with the copying. Uh, so, we, again, we, we, we looked out what was uh, best practices, the city and the county, absolutely charge for any copies that they produce. They don't provide a hard copy or anything like that like we do. We we currently provide a hard copy in addition at our at the back table here in case people want to come in and peruse that. And I noticed a few people doing that tonight, so it seemed of a benefit. Uh, so the options that we've we've identified are one, you could continue with uh, charging for the printed copies and we just want to say this is very in line with our current, um, our, our uh, public records request uh, protocol where uh, members of the public can do a public records request and they get the ten, first 10 pages for free and then subsequent pages are uh, charged if we're going to provide them a hard copy. If we provide them an electronic copy, which we often do, we give them a thumb drive and I think the cost of the thumb drive is around three or four bucks, something like that. So. Uh, and I consider our board packet our main public record. If we have, if you had identified, I would say that's our main public record. All of them, all of them are, I suppose. So um, the other option, option two, is that the request of a um, uh, public member provide a printed copy of the board packet at no cost and set a maximum of one or two copies per year or something like that. Uh, there's many hybrids on that option you could do, but we're not recommending that for various reasons, um, but it's an option. Uh, option three is kind of an interesting one. I think this is one that Josh indicated he had never seen before, but um, uh, in the brainstorming sessions we had, and we call it the library approach, and that's where um, we would take the printed copy that we use for the back table, but make it available for hours on Monday and Tuesday when we're open at the uh, district and somebody could check it out for a couple hours. We haven't worked out all the details of whether they leave a deposit or if they were late returning it, you know, two to three times and they lose their privilege or whatnot, but we want to see in con concept whether you're approved with this. Um, this, uh, you know, is, is uh, you know, just a, another viable option there. Um, and, and uh, I think that's it. Did I get all the options? There's a, okay. a fourth. There's a fourth yeah. But is there a fourth? About the board planning calendar. Oh, oh well, that's a, that's a, oh yeah, fourth. Uh, but I was just going on that one item, and then and then on the uh, fourth item in this agenda, and we can look at the motions here in a minute. That'll help sum it all up. Uh, in the name of efficiency, uh, staff has. Uh, routinely put the board planning calendar um, and special board assignments, they're both on this agenda tonight, they're on the consent agenda, uh, on every board packet. And if it's a value, we want to continue doing that. However, if uh, it's just as good to have it on one board uh, once a month presented, that would probably save a half hour to an hour off Emma and my time. Uh, plus, if somebody gets a printed copy, it's not necessarily have to, to print all that out. So uh, that was another small savings. And then in, in discussions with uh, Director Lather, she also, if I may, suggested maybe we put the um, uh, management report on con uh, consent agenda. And that seems to have, make sense, too. You could pull it, or we staff may even ask to have that pulled occasionally. But if there's not... Um, uh, you know, that's another thing we could we could throw up in consent. I'm just adding that as an extra bonus point here. So those are the various uh, efficiency measures, protocols we're uh, putting forth tonight with various options. And then here in the motions of this are kind of where we get down to the uh, four different items. Uh, one being the, uh, the con revolving around the consent agenda. The other one the time for public comment, and then the third, uh, how to provide 
hard copies of the agenda, and then fourth, the items to remove from consent, um, from regular. So it looks like the four motions you have here are for the staff recommended choices. They are, they are. They so do we, not. We presumably could pick something else. You absolutely no can, or a hybrid. There are these, yes. you know, yes. you, can, you could right. continue on as, as we are. Okay, all right. Thanks for laying it out, it was very yeah. clear and stimulating. Yeah, and thanks to Emma. She put a lot of time into this, and so did uh, the other staff, because policy is serious stuff to us. Okay. So let's do public comment. Colonel Maxwell, a ratepayer of long standing and someone who studied the 40-year history or more of the Soquel Creek Water District, including the performance of the prior incumbent members of this board, the incumbent members, and so forth. And it's a history of millions of dollars of your ratepayers' money being misspent to study desal incorrectly, misspent on other items, overspent on consultants, overspent on attorneys preposterously. You spend a small fortune of hundreds of thousands of dollars to defend you against a very proper lawsuit brought by a lady in the public interest, Ms. Becky Steinbrenner. I'm sorry, that does not have anything to do with this agenda. Well, it does. It does because it relates to comment period on everything and it also relates to the performance the efficiency here your proposal to discontinue allowing three-minute commentary because gee Santa Cruz City has restricted the number of time well Santa Cruz City is overloaded so are the supervisors meetings with hundreds of people sometimes who want to make comments certainly dozens ladies and gentlemen I'd ask the camera to look out here and see there's empty there's no audience you trying to deceive your audience on the, on the television re recording that you, you're overloaded with people making comments? You're not. This is it equivalent. In fact, what you're, what's proposed here to justify your restricting the comment periods is as dishonest with logic, legal proceedings, the common law traditions, and the opportunities of citizens to make comment and hold you accountable for your performance and monitor you as what the Republicans have done in the Senate this week and last week. You're ignoring reality. I don't see a room full of people here imposing unreasonably. You don't like to be confronted with criticism that's very valid. Apparently neither does Donald Trump and the people defending him. What's proposed here is absolutely as ridiculous as the Republican defenses of Trump last week and this week. Do not change your calendar. Allow three minutes. Allow your, your and your stockholders and ratepayers are equivalent to stockholders. You're right, we're not citizens attending the city meeting, the city council, and the supervisors. Your ratepayers have the equivalency under the law of stockholders, and they deserve better respect from you for their time and the imposition of their time on your time, and you listening to their commentary and their concerns, which I've watched you ignore for years frequently. Your rates are too high, they're too damn high because you've mismanaged this place into near bankruptcy by the profligate spending for 40 years, and especially the last 12. Do not change the comment period from three minutes for crying out loud. Give your ratepayers, your stockholders, their, the same due they would have with a uh, publicly controlled company, and they're owed it under the common law tradition in this state. Anyone else? Seeing no one, you can bring it back to the board. So. Take each one separately. I think so. Let's just start with number one, I'd say. Motion number one is about uh, consent items. Which of the three or are there others that we want to talk about? Well, let's just take them one by one. Yep. <clears throat> the fact that the public can comment on the consent uh, item if it's not pulled, mm -hmm. I think is essentially the same. Is, is what's been happening. Um, I see an advantage to the public contacting the board or one of the board members asking for it to be pulled mm -hmm. in that that's an opportunity for them to express their concerns at that point. Right. So, um, and to engage in a, in a dialogue about that item. So, I don't see a downside to um, making it a, a condition appointed item to have a, a board member 
do it. But I'd, I'd like, you know, I'm open to pulling any, any, any item. But, um, and I'm open also if, if, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, a member of the public came up to me and said, I'd like to, to you know, pull this item from the consent agenda. I, I would go ahead and pull it. Yeah, we can be as flexible as we want. In fact, I think it's kind of nice. It's, to me, very much like the fact that one of us could make a motion, but if we don't get a second, it's dead. So if there's not at least two people supporting it. So this would mean public comment as well. If you can't get one board member to say, yeah, I think that's something we should talk about, then uh, it's kind of a, a wasted comment. And, uh, and so it's, uh, I think, a reasonable thing to have. Yeah, I like I like the changing of the format to the discussion format to to allow for public com comment after the fact. If there is a disagreement of some sort about what's on the consent ag agenda and what has what is being removed for discussion, and so I would support that also. I've been through meetings at the county supervisors, and that's how they keep order. They have, of course, a far larger uh, meeting attendance than are ordinarily here at the district, and uh, that is a way to keep order uh, and keep a meeting running smoothly and allow people, everyone in the public who wants to, to discuss what needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Also having a heads up on what is being questioned is nice because then staff could be prepared if, if we mm -hmm. tell them ahead of time so that you're not being asked a question and say, and they have to say, well, we're gonna have to look into that because we don't know the answer. We weren't prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So I see that as a benefit also. Yeah, and I should note, it doesn't preclude the public at all from submitting a uh, written comment. This is, just pu this is just oral communication. So at the time, so a well thought out, you know, argument or, or <coughs> input is always welcome. I know. And there are meetings in general we don't have as many people here well but there are at, as the uh, the board of supervisors or the city council but we've had some meetings with with quite a few people yeah. like 400 i think once mm -hmm. um so these whatever we decide here will Applies apply to the range to yes. the whole wide range well today is the smallest I've seen in the entire time I've been here as a board member so right. I don't know if it reflects reality and I I witnessed that huge me meeting I wasn't on the board at the time and it was a little chaotic because we didn't have a system multiple members of the community uh, were speaking up almost out of turn they took all the, the took all the numbers to have an opportunity to speak and ended up just reiterating their previous uh, opinions over and over again. And so the meeting went on for hours that it didn't need to be. So the comments that had been made, uh, many of them were made repeatedly that just dragged the proceedings down very, it was very defeating. A lot of people left, a lot of customers and people who did want to have a chance to talk never got a chance and they left without ever getting a chance to speak because of that so I think implementing a process in advance of anything like that would be really an advantage okay. yeah and if I can add in again uh, you bring to mind <coughs> talking about process director Lather had another good idea I thought if if you do uh, agree with some of these especially the consent agenda at the top of the agenda uh, we would lay out the process to make sure because there's a lot of public members that come and it's confusing if you haven't been so we try to make that crystal clear that this will be the order and how you go about it yeah. so so do, do any of you see a downside to making the cons consent agenda being pulled by a public member I who talks with with, with the board, board member, member? You'll probably be the one that they all call. Yeah, now that so. I've said, <laughs> <laughs> I've said I'll pull anything because I do believe in, yeah. I do believe in hearing comment. Well, actually, since as I mentioned, they can pull what is it number two, um, and speak on that, which is where we say what we're pulling. 
Mm -hmm. um, they can ask anyone of the five of us to pull something for them. So if you can get even one person. Yeah. And usually I am <coughs> available the whole day of a meeting, just making sure I understand the board packet adequately. I think yeah. we all put a lot of time in it, but that time period in particular, I, may, I go over the board packet during the day. So it sounds like we're kind of all okay with motion number one. Do we want to change that motion anyway or add something um, to it? Or? So the so the timing of when this would, would be, you, Ron, you mentioned towards the end of the meeting is, is the consent agenda. Uh, well, if an, like item is pull, if an item's pulled off the consent agenda, we thought we would put it at the end if there's going to be discussion and vote just because they're generally – the we want to put the most prominent things in front of you the most most yeah yeah that need the most uh input whether from the public or the board the staff at the at the um at the top of the agenda the reason it's on the consent is because it and 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 the board president setting the agenda with the general manager and any anybody else it's been deemed routine and, and non-controversial and and just doesn't really belong on the regular admin calendar so if we it, it, so if it was pulled, we we're suggesting put it at the bottom. That have to just you know be on up the fly. The but okay. more important, I think, if I understand what you're really asking, is the meeting would start, and I've got it up here with a call to order. Um, let me get down here. Yeah, call to order, roll call. If there's a public hearing, which we don't always have, we had one tonight, but that was, uh, an, and then announcement by uh, the board president really. Uh, our board members of items to be removed from the consent agenda. And um, there's Sorry. various ways to do that. Any, however you decide tonight, any board member can have the authority and, and Josh help me out or you can, I, what I thought I heard was you need uh, a, a second by somebody else. I mean, you can design that I would assume however you want. That's correct. And, uh, but the point here is once people know what's removed from consent, they know what's not removed from consent and so they can talk about that on oral communications, which is the next item and um, down here, you know, it would be on the, uh, then we would go to oral and written communications. So if something wasn't pulled, for whatever reason, there's still the opportunity for the public to say, hey, you, items, you know, 3.1 wasn't pulled, uh, it's on the cons it was on it's on the consent I'd like to talk to it and then comes the consent agenda after that so you're 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 voting on the consent agenda after the public has had time to input on it and I think that's the key that we wanted to uh, uh, stress so it wouldn't be a separate oral commute separate opportunity for the public it seems like oral communications it is well as it is now is it's things that aren't on the on agenda, the agenda. And is in a consent agenda, also an agenda? So this is the way I believe Santa Cruz and others do it. Could they talk to it on uh, 6 yeah. when they get to the consent agenda as a whole, John? Uh, that would be how we, how the board okay. would like us to structure public comment. So we could structure it the way it's been you know, identified um, up on the screen. Alternative, or if you'd like, we could have an additional public comment period um, just for number 6. I'm, I'm, although I'm going to later on, you know, um, try and limit the amount of time, but I'm, I think the more opportunities for public comment, the better. So I would favor having a public comment specifically on the consent agenda. For items not pulled at that for point. items yeah. not pulled, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm confused about if a board member's gonna be requesting something to be pulled, is it always going to be voted on before we'll pull it? Because right now we ask for things to be pulled. Nobody votes on that. No, we vote on it at the end of the, when we address it. At, and Ron's suggesting that come at the end of the meeting. Well, because the consent agenda items tend to be um, more matter <laughs> of it. fact. Is you know that what, what you're mean? suggesting? <laughs> well, there's, there's confusion here. So there, there's a vote on the item itself, I think, is what you're talking about, whether you pull an item and everybody gets to vote. And then I think what Director Lather, I thought what I heard you say is, are you voting on whether to pull an item, not the item itself? Right. And there's different ways to go about, and Josh, help me out here. Do you want to? Well, I would propose yes. we keep it the way we do now. Okay. Which okay. is the president asks 
board members, if any of them have anything they want pulled, mm -hmm. and if they do, it is pulled. Okay. So okay. we don't vote on it. Okay. If a board member thinks they want to talk about it, then we should talk about it. And that's the way it's meant to be in this. It just wasn't explicit, uh, but yeah. And, and another thing is that you know this is clearly a trial. So if we sure. don't find this is quite workable, yeah. we'll bring it back and change it. But so what I, now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about any items that were pulled would not be discussed at that time and not voted on at that time. It'd be later. At the right. end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we've seen other agencies do. Okay. And, and it seemed to make sense because then you're the public's chiming in and, and, you're, and then we have a discussion around an item that maybe other members of the public came to things that were on the agenda or that have at least been evaluated to the best of our degree to be um, require more input or more discussion. Okay. It does make things more time certain. And that yeah. if you if you want to see, you know, item, you know, 6.3, yeah. you have some idea of when that's liable to come up. Whereas if you pull consent items as we can now and spend you know, half an hour talking about consent items, then that makes that certainty less certain. Yeah. Gotcha. So I think there's, in fact, I think the regional board does it that way too. Yes. So it's, it's clearer when things are going to happen. Okay, so. So it looks like motion one does capture what we just talked about. Right. So anyone would like to make that motion? Okay. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniel? Yes. Okay. We roar right along to the next one, which is about public comment, I believe. Yeah. So as I went through, I don't know if you need any more description, but we laid you out some options, and um, there's our recommendation, staff's recommendation. And just to re go back, the options were um, stick with three minutes, stay, uh, uh, go to two minutes, go to um, uh, three minutes for the first time somebody speaks or two minutes and two minutes for any subsequent uh, item uh, that they speak to, allow, uh, allow public to speak up to four agenda items with, and I would assume that would be with three minutes. Um, so those are the options that we, we presented. I had a question about two and three. Um, both of those require record keeping. If you say one person can, can can do three minutes for the first one and then two minutes. Yeah. So you have to keep records of everyone who's sp spoken and same yeah. thing for number three. So who is going to do that work? Because I mean, people over there are kind of busy already. <laughs> that, that's a great question, and that's why I vote for the general manager to do it. How about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's why I, we love that you say uh, whatever we do is a trial. I mean, that's how we operate. Try it and fix it if it's if it's not right and refine it and make it better. Uh, so on that one, we were wor we were or are worried about the logistics of it a little bit. Yep. So right now you're you're we're looking over at Tracy, and uh, she would probably have to do that. Uh, it could be potentially confusing or hard if you had a a bunch of people. I would say if you had a bunch of people in the crowd, you're probably going to limit it to just sh two minutes straight off the bat, or one minute even, because again, equal opportunity. <coughs> um, that's why we did not recommend that option. You know, we liked it, but logistically, the the uh, doing it outweighed the, uh, what the other agencies do, two minutes. So the, when we talk about these guidelines, let's say we have another 400-person meeting. Mm -hmm. I hope not, but let's, mm -hmm. let's say we do. Yeah. Are we, are we able to um, deviate from these guidelines? I think we already have yes. that, that we can. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we would, what, if whatever the board decides on this, we'll make sure to keep the flexibility in your guidelines that give you the, the discretion at the beginning of the meeting to modify these as appropriate. Right. And so if you have but 400 people, yes. it would be okay for you to go down to 60 seconds a person to ensure as many people got to speak as possible. So just like today, the default is three minutes. We can make the default be something else for a particular meeting. Yes. So I had a different, different approach that didn't involve record keeping, and that was to, uh, in the interest of letting everyone comment, providing three minutes for oral communications, presumably because that would be new items that aren't being considered on the agenda already, and then going automatically down to two, and uh, providing for advance uh, review of 
the board packet so that we could have concise comments that really directly uh, pertain to the item being discussed, and that would be really a valuable con contribution from the public if they were prepared and could present their arguments in two minutes. I think that would be really an asset to the whole meeting proceedings, but the three, a lot of people comment on oral communications who aren't necessarily prepared, but have a, it, something occurred to them just then, and that would be an opportunity and mm -hmm. give them and a chance to not have a, uh, a completely formed idea. Or In addition to the item they may have come for, your, is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, yeah I, w I would, I don't know, I wasn't really comfortable with limiting the number of items that could be commented on, or, uh, you know, very often someone gets in there and they hear someone comment previously and they go, well, wait a second, I want to say something. But it can go on and on unless you really think about what you've said and can really be concise. So I'm hoping that this would fo foster that kind of uh, editing, self-editing a little bit. Uh, that's what I'm proposing, though. It is a three-minute oral communication time limit so and then two. So and then defer to the president <laughs> um, if any other limits are required, you know, that be in view of who shows up for the for commenting. Mm -hmm. Right. That sounds like a kind of a happy medium. Um, I, in addition, I think we should be really clear on guidelines. It's public comment, and um, it's not interactive. It's not. Um, yeah. it's not it's not uh, we can inc people can say whatever they want but we can encourage people if other people have said what they were going to say to keep it briefer and just yes. say that they agree with that person um, and the reason for that I mean for me I signed on for this and I and so I, you know, if the meeting goes long, I'm here to where, whenever it ends. But there, I've noticed, and then I've actually had people comment to me, when the meeting drags on, people don't stay. And they, they might want, might have wanted to stay for a later part of the meeting, but they don't stay. So I'd like to keep it efficient. And it respects the public's time. Yeah, and we could certainly, this is what's on the agenda now, the second page on every agenda. We can elaborate in the oral written communications wh however we think is appropriate to better inform the public on yeah, the expectations. Page. I would suggest that we not necessarily read it, but summarize it, you know. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that what I was... Yeah, you, ha you had that. Uh, maybe some of that would go up top, too, besides just the consent agenda. Put it at, at the top, you know, this is the procedure yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. you, know, you get your time to talk you don't yell in the middle of the meeting <laughs> I don't know how you'd say well, it but there's can, there's a certain decorum that's you can't disrupt the meeting right that's the I think that's Guideline. the bottom line yeah. yeah so I'm confused what are we what are we thinking well that about was something this? different we're, sorry but I, I liked what I liked the idea of three minutes for oral communications for things not on the agenda right and how about and I like the idea of two minutes or trying that and seeing it two minutes it, it could things. it could be that yeah, that okay. it doesn't work that that's not enough time mm -hmm. for public comment but I'd like to try it okay well even now the president can give people extra time I believe so if yeah. someone makes mm -hmm. a case that they need more than two minutes uh, that can be done and again, that's oral communication. The public can always write in, as one lady yeah, has done right. today, and which is great. And since it's on the agenda, they certainly have the capability of writing it down and submitting it that way. Okay. Um, so, anyone want to make that motion for number two? I have two? a comment on what you're considering. You've already to uh, talked on this item. Yes, I do. Yes, you've already talked no, on no, it. You've you have mind. already talked on this I'm item. To another topic. You have already talked on number 6.2. And you've moved to a subtopic. No, You're going to restrict no, it no. You get to talk on 6.2. You've done that. Done. You can't vote on it until you have full comment. And you've you gave a comment on 6.2. You are out of order. Uh, you are like so the, the 
Republicans stopping witnesses. You cannot restrict public comment. Three minutes should remain it. You don't have 12 hours up here to talk to us. You get one three-minute section to talk about each agenda item, and I was done. <clears throat> okay, so where are we? Yes, we're looking at this one. Anyone want to form a motion on this one? Oh, so I was going to, did we state the motion? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, that I would propose that we allow three minutes for oral communications, uh, limit it uh, to two-minute uh, cons uh, comment on consent uh, on agenda items, and pretty strict, but we would follow that, and it would be subject to s subsequent change and re review and change if it didn't work out. So that's... Would you be willing to add that we evaluate it at some point in the future? Yes. Just to, since it is yeah. something new, I don't know what appropriate length of time. Three months. Three months that came to mind. Okay. And so when you say oral communication, you mean uh, the item, item oral communications for? Right. Yes, item. For Currently it's 4.0 on this one. 4.0. Okay. <laughs> oral and written communication. Okay. Right. Okay. That's my motion. Okay. Yeah, I'll second. A motion second. Roll call, please. Vice President Lather. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen. Yes. And President Daniels. Yes. Okay. That was 6.2. We now go to 6.3. Oh, no, we're on 6.2. We're in this one. No, we're still oh, we're right. Okay, you're right. Ooh. We're just oh. taking this yep. motion. What was confusing is we've been taking this item by item to keep it right. uh, discussion yeah. full. To keep the president from getting confused. So the next one's on printed <laughs> copies. Yep. <laughs> So we've laid out again uh, several options for you there. Um, what we've noted is that to provide a hard copy, we just averaged the uh, last year's worth of meetings, which the packets have actually been a little bit smaller than in the past. Um, and it's about $30 a packet or $570 a year. And then with staff time, that does not include staff time. So. I equate it roughly to a, a basically free water service for a family of two over a year, the equivalent of giving out a, a, a printed packet. But um, again, the options are uh, continue with the current practice, which is the current practice uh, before we has been to, to charge. We were giving somebody uh, a free copy for a while, but that wasn't necessarily our practice is what we were doing, I guess. Um, but to, uh, and the current practice is to charge for copy, printed copies, 15 cents a page or 25 cents a double-sided page. Uh, let's see, and then at the request um, of a public member, we could also produce the packet at that cost. And then we could also set, uh, if a public member, another option is if a public member requested, give any public member a copy once or twice a year. We're not recommending that one. The library approach was, again, we're kind of a little bit proud of that one because we hadn't seen it when we came up with it. It, it. It's neat because it still allows a hard copy to be available at no charge to the public. Anybody that wants to see it and check it out, there are some logistical issues with it. That's why we didn't recommend it. But the other thing is it's, it's in line with our sustainability practice of not making uh, just additional copies that are, that are out there at, um, that aren't being used or at, at no cost uh, to, uh, to the people. And so that was the, the third approach. Staff is recommending we do what other agencies and what is a BMP, a best management practice, and that is to charge for the printed copies, although we've laid out a couple options for you. Um, well, I have a comment on that, and I just wanted to emphasize that we, you had discussed this at the beginning of item 6.2, and this is just yeah, elaboration this is for yeah. mm -hmm. our questions, and we're yeah. still on item 6.2. I think the Correct. public member was confused. Yeah, so I, I had a question about that, and that is, did, you know, the going on to the library thing, mm -hmm. and that's actually uh, whether it's feasible or whether you've uh, considered going to the two libraries that are in our district, the Aptos Library and the Capitol Library, which is, of course, under reconstruction, but um, uh, to provide a desk copy that people could read because one of the problems, the other problem with having a hard copy as a library item here is that there's really, I mean, not here, but in our district, 
is currently there's no place to sit down and read it mm -hmm. very easily. Yeah. And checking it out would uh, leave uh, other members of the public unable to access that copy. Whereas if you have it as a reference item at the library mm -hmm. itself, people could sit there and read it and once they were finished with it, or there might be even a time limit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how complicated that would be, but yeah. I know that other items have have been available at libraries. Yeah, uh, those, are, those are good <laughs> suggestions. We had thought about that. Um, I'll, I'll respond to that. Regarding the library, the one thing we don't want to do is put out copies that, uh, that aren't used. Uh, we don't have control once it's put out. People could take certain things or even insert pages that are beyond our control. So we were uncomfortable with that, but mainly I, I, I don't know if that'd be the highest use of our resources uh, because generally there aren't a lot of people asking for this, this packet. I can tell you that. Oh, that's and, true. And the in the in the um, office, the checkout uh, that does uh, have some logistical issues. So if we were to do that, of course, it'd be a trial thing, as as all this is, as we as we tr break new ground. Um, but we thought that had had potential. We didn't recommend it because of the of the issues. But I could foresee. Uh, people ahead of time saying, hey, I want to reserve a spot, a slot to check it out, and, and then you know that you can't come during that, you know, it's going to be checked out. Um, and maybe we reserve a little bit of time that's more spontaneous, so for people who see the new agenda, like, uh, there's various options on that. Well, I was thinking that I uh, might, uh, might be attractive to the librarians because the, the alternative is to go online at the library and read it, but that ties up a computer that, I mean, computers mm -hmm. at the library are pretty much at a premium to, uh, you know, because that is uh, many people in our community's source of the internet connection. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't absolutely need it, it's one copy might be a valuable public service. Um, so so I, I reached out to Tom LeHu, Director mm -hmm. LeHu, because this was, was something that, that he wanted to, to have on here. And I'm gonna, I'll just read the text. Um, so he, he liked the idea of having someone be able to check out the one printed copy at the district for several hours. That way we don't waste money on extra copies, but still give the public access to a printed copy prior to the meeting. <coughs> I was thinking of that one actually in, in combination with uh, number one, which is when you check it out, you would essentially lay down what the thing costs and then you would get it back when you turn it in. So if you didn't turn it in, you just bought a copy. So if it's $20, you put down $20. When you check it back in appropriately, you get your $20 back. And if you didn't, uh, if you decide, well, I want to keep this and you put it up on the wall and frame it or something, mm -hmm. uh, you would just keep it and you've already paid for it, essentially. That would mean uh, less problems trying to track it down and find it and count the hours and all that. Uh, yeah. They don't return it on the, on the, um, right, based on the guidelines. Yep. I'm not as attracted to that idea as I am. I think I, we may not be able to vote on this because we don't even know how a library would do that. Like the Aptos Library is not very far from, uh, so that's the only library we're considering. We could possibly consider within our district, but um, taking, even if someone checks it out and they return it several hours later, it's still tying it up a copy that someone else might want to use, whereas if you're sitting there reading it, you know how much time you're going to. Well, as well as well, that would sort of deviate from their policy. I mean, usually they check things out for two weeks, so yeah, I'm not sure they're even going to want to deal with two-hour checkouts. No, so. there are plenty of reference materials that are not checked out; they're just reviewed yeah. at yeah. the library. I, you know, I, as we discuss this on the fly, I mean. The district is, you know, it is, it's the district, so it's not a, a, a library, but I, w I might be concerned about if we put it uh, at the 
Capitola Library, it'd be more favoritism to the Capitola folks or the Aptos. I just want to think that one through too, that I we're agree. being fair. I, we, we may, for personally, we might not be able to vote on that, yeah. that item yet. And then there's staff time mm -hmm. and getting back out there. We have to be running that out every Monday morning or, or whatever and recouping them. I, I, it, it's an interesting concept. Uh, we thought it through some, but not all, because we just stopped at a certain point. Well, the Wednesday after the meeting, it's pretty moot. It's just a bunch of recycled paper. Going <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. we, we put them online forever so people can go back and look yeah, at them. Well, that's you know? different. The printed that's, copy a you yeah. that's a record. I, I think we're flattering ourselves that a lot yes. of people are going to want our Yeah. Our, yeah. Our, we could try even packet, to check out. But we do want to make it accessible. Yeah. So I. I favor the idea of, of trying having a copy at, at the at the district, um, and I your idea of there being you know some um, responsibility of whoever checks it out. I I agree with that, but I don't think we have to ask them to put down money up front. But if if somebody keeps checking it out or. It doesn't mean and right. doesn't return it, then they lose the privilege to to check it out. Yeah. Okay, that would work. So, and I I I'm not a you know, I know it it, it is um, you know it would be staff time running it out to a library. Um, but if people were going to look at it, well, then it it'd be worthwhile. Yeah. But, and I'm not, I'm not as concerned like you that there's going to be people putting in fake pages and yeah. <laughs> yeah. saying that Jaffe said this when he did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, said yeah, drawing, mu <laughs> drawing, drawing mustaches. You know, one thought is uh, <laughs> if, we see, if we see a heavy demand for the packet at the office or if it's a, an exceptional agenda that we think the public may be interested in, we could note that we will deliver to libraries or something like that. But I would say, let's test drive this. Like you said, we may be flattering ourselves thinking we have a high, we're a bestseller when we're really a, um, you know, lucky to. Well, honestly, I, most likely people are interested in the agenda so they can know about when they would show up for an item and then the material supporting that particular item on the agenda is, I think, yeah. mostly how commenters, customers work yeah. here. So it may be they don't even have to check it out they just need to look at it for a few minutes yeah and and remember we're just talking about a hard copy uh most people prefer and or you know for whatever reasons uh, electronic copy which is certainly available to yeah and I, go ahead presumably any scheme we pick you're always able to do number one which is walk in and buy one copy absolutely yeah, yeah. well um yeah I'll, I'll I'll make a motion. Okay. I would like to to try the library concept with with one copy at the district, and um, I you know three hours per checkout so somebody could take it, go to a coffee shop, do whatever, and bring it back, um, and <coughs> let's see, I'd like. I don't know if we need to formalize that it's a privilege or so if somebody doesn't return it that they lose the privilege. Oh, well, I think we need to have something in place. It could yeah. be we de delegate that to staff to come we'll let, up with we'll let staff, okay. yeah. But I just like the, the last um, motion, I think we should reevaluate in three months because this is. Oh, that's right. Brand new. Yeah. So the is that clear? Item, item three you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Uh, motion three. Yeah, my uh, motion three. Thank you. Right, but it's the it's adopting three, the third approach, the library approach, yeah. as you suggested. Yeah. Yep. Item three, evaluate three, the third approach, and three. Yeah. <laughs> in three months, okay. three, okay. three, okay. three. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I'll second. Okay. Second. Roll call, please. Vice President Lather. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen. Yes. And President Daniels. Yes. And I'd love to see 10 copies being necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I think we benefit if people were that into yep. what goes on in their meetings, but I, right. I doubt they are. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have number four to consider. 
Yeah, and hopefully this is a easy one. It's just, uh, it, however, if the board does find having the board planning calendar or special board assignments uh, valuable for every um, in every <coughs> board packet, that's wonderful. We're, we're here to provide it. If not, we're suggesting um, we do it only once a month, and that'd be the first board meeting, unless we only have one board meeting, it would be that board meeting per month. And so you wouldn't be doing a calendar in each packet. Right. And then the the special board assignments dash report. Yeah, it would just be presented once a month. Once it a doesn't month. change that heavily and, and we do capture everything. I think we've yeah. been very good about that. And uh, I like the way that you have different colors. Yeah, we different colors and bring it back. That are active and new. Yeah, now one thing that was brought up is do we need uh, we try to do it very comprehensively. We we give like two months in the rears and two months in the future. And I know, I think it was you particularly, Director Jaffe, D Director Jaffe, that liked having the history, but if that's just kind of like dragging it down, we could reduce that down to one month in the past or none, yeah, whatever you want. Just I'll leave it up to you. Okay. I don't want to be All dragged right. down. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and 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 then this is different than the reports that we do receive from the different. Yeah, and that's that's the management update that yeah. we do once a month. And okay. what we were proposing there, can we talk mm -hmm. about? Okay, yeah. so we can talk. So that's another efficiency item that was uh, introduced uh, by Director Lather, was putting that on the consent agenda uh, because it really is just a report out. Uh, we're here if we if you want the items discussed uh, and sometimes we do we may ask you to pull the item but generally it's just a, a, a meant to be a one-way flow of information to update you and the and the community on what we're doing and if there's something that is a so you'd put on a consent agenda and if staff wants to highlight something they would pull it mm -hmm. and if the, the board or public wanted more information on something then the board would decide whether to pull it or not. Yeah. And it would go to the end of the packet for the night or close to the end if another if agenda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just like any other consent item. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we don't even need to change this motion. Right? Right, and then the, it's just guidance on the, the yeah. in terms of the org organization of the, the management reports. Yeah. Not a motion. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll do the easy one and say let's I'll um, make a motion for what it says here for number four. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll second it. <laughs> Roll call, please. Vice President Lather? Yes. Uh, Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniel? Yes. So is there anything else on this one? That's it. I think so. Oh, thank you. Okay, now we go to 6.3. Consider approval of seawater intrusion prevention wells and monitoring wells. Good evening. So this uh, item relates to Pure Water Soquel, as you're mostly familiar with. Uh, this is the third pillar of our uh, three-component project. Um, this is professional services for engineering and uh, preparation of bid-ready uh, documents. <coughs> Uh, this is different from the pipelines and the treatment plants, which are being done uh, progressive design build. This, this pillar of seawater intrusion prevention wells will be bid out as a traditional design bid build uh, phase of procurement. procurement. And so uh, Montgomery and Associates has in their wheelhouse, formerly Hydrometrics, the expertise to uh, weigh in and provide the technical specs and design for the wells, the remaining wells. Um, that would be the Monterey well and the Willowbrook well. Uh, that's the straw in the ground. They're very familiar with that. They've worked with us in the past and successfully um, provided that service. That's only approximately 17% of this scope that you're considering tonight. The lion's share of it is more civil-sided uh, infrastructures. That's, you know, everything related to site access, electrical, um, paving, pump selection, fencing, making the site literally from start to finish operable, 
uh, ready to work. And so we've, we've had to do this recently at the Granite Way well. As you might recall, that's uh, nearing completion, but there is a, you know, a decent amount of effort to go from design to construction. And so that they have recruited uh, Water Systems Consulting and uh, that's a familiar name. They did our last urban water management plan, but they also have civil um, experience in their, in their wheelhouse. And so Montgomery and Associates has teamed with them as a subconsultant to do the site civil work. And we are ready to move forward with this. This has a little longer um, process because of the, we're gonna split it up into two bid phases. Uh, that's traditionally how we do it. It's a little easier to design the pump and, and system dynamics once the well is finished. And, and they're usually very different um, uh, contractors. So our approach here would be to do the design of the wells first, procure those, and then fall back on the civil and move forward with that procurement after the wells are drilled. Um, this will be funded through the grant and so we ask that you consider making a motion to award this scope of work but before that i can answer any questions or we can have public comment as well any questions of uh, staff yeah i was just so in looking at the budget it looks like um you're relying on montgomery and associates uh for assistance, like on the well bid assistance. And in the past, we've done that in-house, right? So is it, is engineering slammed? Is that with, a, with everything going on? And is that, or am I mis misremembering? Well, no, that's specific to any questions that may come up, requests for information or um, potentially addendums that may need to be issued as bidders um, look at the packet. And if there's any, un you know, clarification that we need to make before mm -hmm. we issue the bid. Uh, that may also include reviewing the bidder bid results and giving their opinion on on the qualifications of drillers. And we we will handle the civil side. Okay. But that is you know the well drilling portion is M and A's wheelhouse. If there's so procedurally some question about what's what's requested so they're the best people to do that they would be yeah okay and then just a question on so wsc is, is a subcontractor to m m and a m and a montgomery, so associates. Have to get montgomery and associates and water systems consulting systems consultants and i so there's a markup and that's because it's subcontracting that standard that would be standard now any subsequent markup we can um, request be removed so if if wsc uh, has a a sub consultant with say electrical design sub so a sub to a sub yeah. that would then we don't want to have a double markup yeah okay but that's standard to, to do a markup on one yes but not a, not a subsequent markup. One thing I do want to mention, I mentioned it in the memo, but um, we did conduct, I, Brown and Caldwell is familiar with this type of project, and so we requested that they perform a, an independent cost analysis. And um, they did that for us line by line, task by task, and their they came to a price that was actually a little higher than this, roughly $59,000 higher mm. when it all comes down to it. And so we do feel that this is uh, in line and not out of line with this type of work. Yeah. For, for three, three separate sites, independent sites, it's got some logistics associated with it. Thanks for asking for that independent cost analysis. Yeah. You're, you're welcome. Any other questions? If I had a few. Um, <clears throat> well, actually, it's it's not just the three wells. It's three wells and all Honoring the marketing wells. wells. That's right. Which there's like 
four or five per uh, injection well. So, uh, and as is that then going to produce monitoring wells like the monitoring wells we currently have along the coast, or will they be different? Uh, they'll be relatively similar to what we're, you're, we're familiar with. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I see there's also a lot of money being spent on designing of these monitoring wells. And if we already have designs for the ones we use along the coast, uh, maybe that could save us some money as to not start from scratch and produce something very different that we don't quite have any experience using. So. Well, what the reason that that, yeah, no, they can, they have done our design for the well, monitoring wells in the past. The, this will take a different approach. The uh, method of drilling is different than the production wells. So they will be a separate um, procedure that's just prescribed and required. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, yes, they do have that in their wheelhouse. Um, I'm not sure how much if that's real specific to, if it's broken out specifically how much they're contributing towards monitoring wells uh, on page 44 i see at the very top um, for the twin lakes church they're calling for redevelopment now i know we do redevelopment of wells when they've been in service for you know 10 years and they start getting clogged up but i mean this is a literally almost a brand new well that has been tested so why are we doing redevelopment of that and you know is that expensive? I would imagine so. Yeah, when we when we were uh, conducting the testing of that well, um, subsequent injection tests, when we did a video after the first injection test, we discovered that there was some fine silt uh, in the screens, and that needs to be removed, and it, it hasn't been removed as part of the original drilling operations um, so and that's that, what's meant by related development then, is yeah it's <clears throat> it's removing any fine silts that remained after uh, the injection testing mm. which is not typical for our production wells we don't normally do that but it did generate some silt and the final video showed that and it is something that we want to remove from there okay. before we begin injecting so it's not the typical redevelopment that we have to do for old wells though. no it wouldn't there would be no sometimes we use a chemical uh, rehab Bobs and, you know, that. yeah they'll they'll probably do some airlifting and some zone development um, but they will need to bring in Baker tanks right the thing I'm really concerned about is on page uh, what is it uh, 68 it's the schedule and they have the last Item 5.2, well site equipment bid phase, well site equipping construction and startup. And that lasts 21 months and takes us into 2023. And if that's the case, we're not going to have a system that works by uh, the end of 2022 because there's to be creating the, the, the wells. And that seems, for one thing, why does it take 21 months? And uh, the other is, if it does, why, we need to try and find something different to accelerate that. So you don't have to answer now, but I think that needs to be looked at. Yes, good, good point. Okay. Any other? Things? Is that what that meant? I was, I didn't see a color key. Huh? No. All right. Okay. Public comment. Anyone wish to speak on this item? And I, I believe the, the new policies you adopted will, will begin at the next board meeting. Yes, that's okay. why that makes too. sense. Thank you. Becky Steinbrunner, resident of Aptos. So the Twin Lakes Church is part of Purewater SoCal. Let's make that clear. It has been all along. Um, I do want to um, just point out that the, this is an extremely expensive project, extremely risky project, and I still feel it should not go forward. I want to point out you're not talking about the money in front of your audience, your very small audience here. Maybe you've got people watching, but this is for a contract not to exceed $645,000, 320. Uh, that's a lot of money, and it's coming out of 
the operating contingencies reserve. Since when do capital improvement projects come out of the operating contingencies reserve? This isn't um, making a lot of financial sense to me. And you have a tank, the Quail Run tank, that you borrowed money for a long time ago, and it's still not even anywhere near on the completion or even being looked at. It is anticipated that um, approximately 47% of the total cost will be expended by June 30th of this year. So what about the other uh, half of the cost of this uh, doing these injection wells? Your general manager stated under oath and under um, penalty of perjury that all costs to be reimbursed by grant money would have to be expended by February 29th of this year. So um, how are you going to recover the rest of this money? I also want to say that um, I've seen the uh, Monterey site. It is extremely constricted. It's a small site, a lot of oak trees. Are you going to be cutting trees? And right next to it, nearly on the fence, is a, a two-story apartment complex. What are you going to be doing for that? How, where will you put the Baker tanks to develop the Monterey well? How will you address the issue of, at Willowbrook, the park being right there? This is not very well thought out, <laughs> and it's very expensive. And um, thank you, Director Daniels, for bringing out the point that it's not even going to be making the deadline for your project to um, be, f be online, as is one of the requirements for your grant that you've just received. So again, I want to say that this will be coming out of the operating contingency fund that is $2 million. Anyone else? <coughs> Colonel, Colonel Terry Maxwell, a customer and a resident and a rate payer, and I endorse Ms. Steinbrenner's comments 100 and 1,000 percent. She is totally correct. Every item she challenges is totally well-founded. For you to steal from your operating contingency reserve fund to fund this capital improvement, which, by the way, you're doing in violation of the California Environmental Quality Act because you haven't complied with looking at the alternatives, and Ms. Steinbrenner has correctly sued you about that. And you have had it manipulated by Judge Gallagher to ignore the facts, the evidence, and the law and not enjoin you it should have happened. Every one of you should be investigated and perhaps even indicted for your failure to honor your obligations to your ratepayers and their money and your compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act as well as your compliance with the common law traditions of fiduciary obligations with other people's money. It is so easy in government, especially in this county, to waste the taxpayers' money. And you're part of the county government, in effect. You're, a, you're an offshoot component. But you're even more obligated because your ratepayers have the position of being stockholders and shareholders in the Soquel Creek Water District. And for 45 years, this board has ignored your obligations, especially the last 10 or 12. The Poop Water Soquel Project, as I call it, should not proceed until you comply with a proper environmental uh, 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 assessment. And if you did that, it would fail. That's why you got a fix from Judge Gallagher twice and a fix from Judge Smaltz twice. It's tragic. You could fix the problem with a merger with Santa Cruz and a regionalization of the water authorities here and 18 to $23 million implementing the Lockhofer and, and Mr. McGilvoy's North Coast and some other recovery and not waste 130 to $50 million and produce water that is going to be always polluted that will always have pharmaceutical waste in it and will always be a danger to children especially who get their water from the Soquel Creek Water District where they live. It's tragic. Somebody's going to make a lot of money on the 130 to 150 million dollars and I predict you'll waste that too. The two million dollars you should not touch 
You don't have the rights to do so, and it's profligate as hell for you to steal from your operating contingency fund to throw it into this unsupported, technically unnecessary, and not properly in compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act yet. Ms. Steinbrenner should be applauded for her applauded for her efforts to hold you accountable to comply with the law, common sense, and good science. It's, it's tragic. This board is tragic in your waste of other people's money, your ratepayers' money. You should all be removed in a recall. Your step. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, I'm just listening to all the things that are going to be done here. And uh, before I think I've mentioned, my husband for 33 years was the superintendent of production at Santa Cruz City Water. And many times he spoke about doing the desalt plant. And he said it would be so expensive, not only when to do it, but to have people there to run it. He said it would be astronomical cost to the ratepayers. And I think you have to take this into consideration. I wish he was here to talk about it because he would have a lot to say. Sorry, he's not. So I'm speaking for him. Think of the rate payers. Look at the cost. You're putting a lot of this outside of our own district. We have engineers. I agree with someone. Why can't our own engineers look into these? You're paying a lot of people outside, and they're getting lots of money. So think about that. We have engineers. Let them focus on that. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one, I bring it back. And by the way, as I've mentioned last time, and as you've complained again this time, there are no other alternatives. These are not alternatives. If you think those are alternatives, go to the city of Santa Cruz and have them write it up as an alternative. It is, sit down, it is not, they are not alternatives because the city owns those properties, they own the water rights, we don't, and unless the city is willing to say, you can have it for this circumstance and these arrangements, it doesn't exist and therefore it should not be in an EIR because you're not supposed to <coughs> comment on things that are not real. A so regional takeover of the water supply. That would have no effect whatsoever. Yes, it would. No, it wouldn't because legally the water right that the city has only applies to their property. Excuse they, the they, they, uh, water water. President Daniels, it, it's a turning into a back and forth yep, of the yeah, public. It is. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to. What? I would. I like to give staff an opportunity if they want to correct any misinformation. Okay. But before that, what keeps coming up is is that there's going to be pharmaceuticals in the water, mm -hmm. and that's not the truth. There's uh, membranes involved. Reverse osmosis doesn't allow a molecule the size of a pharmaceutical to get through. And yeah. in contrast some of the city's water in the river already does contain pharmaceuticals that are not taken out by their processes. Since there are literally thousands of septic systems up the river. Yeah, what we've learned through uh, various surveys is that many people express the same fear and then when they become educated about it, they move it their position. Right. And the, the um, kind of, um, the story that I use to help people with water quality understand it better is, and I've said it, and I may just take a second, is that, you know, many cities around the world take water either from the ground or from a river, treat it to tertiary or secondary standards and put it in the back in the river. And then the town below it takes that same water and treats it to conventional water standards and then serves it to their public. And uh, this goes on and on. So they're, they're dumping their secondary treated affluent into the river and the next town picks it up. For example, uh, in Atlanta, 15, mi 15 places, I think within about 10 miles stretch north. Um, in Dallas, uh, if they didn't put their treated, secondary treated affluent into the river the, down in Dallas in the summertime, the river would go dry. But here's the kicker that really helps people. And this is what the Berkeley professor shared with us this recycle concept is that when people take the water out and treat it to conventional standards even though it's 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 a lot of its secondary water the process that is being proposed by uh, pure water socal and has been proven by others treats that water a hundred million times more than conventional standards 100 million times even though they may have si similar composition 
because it has treated affluent in it 100 million times. And so the independent advisory compatible panel that the board um, hired, you know, so that's why they supported the Pure Water SoCal project because they know this kind of information. Okay. So we're looking at 6.3. Can I ask the board, um, yeah, we con consider the adding another motion before you authorize this to um, transfer the funds from OCR. I, I omitted that and okay. that was my error, but that does need to happen. Uh, that's part of the approval of the uh, uh, of the item, so it would need to be included in the initial motion, but it could be handled in, at a single motion. Okay. So, is there any discussion or any motions? Or I will move that we transfer funds from the operation OCR budget in the amount of six hundred forty-five thousand three hundred and twenty. Up to. Up to, exceed. yeah. Not to exceed, right? Not to exceed mm -hmm. and authorize the board, the board president to amend the existing professional contract with Montgomery and Associates to approve that scope that is attached to this board item. And then I think authorize the general manager to sign the purchase order in, in addition. Oh, so yes. There you are. And authorize the general manager to sign the purchase order. I missed that in there. It's Sorry in about there. that. It's all in motion. Okay. All right. So I want to second that. I will second that. Oh. Roll call, please. Vice President Lather? Yes. Uh, Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes, thank you. Now we go to 6.4 appointment of district representative on the Aqua JPIA. Yeah, so uh, in accordance with JPIA, uh, the Joint Powers Insurance Authority uh, <coughs> bylaws, um, and we belong to JPIA and Aqua, that the governing board, um, uh, the district must appoint one director to be part of the governing board and can select a, uh, a several al uh, alternates if they like. And so I'm going to slightly modify what we recommend down here in this um, recommendation. If two board members want to do it, that's excellent. The reason we suggest uh, staff being an alternate is because often one of the staff members are at these meetings. You know, they're, they're in Monterey one time, one part of the year, and the next part of the year they're usually in Southern California, Monterey or Sacramento, and then down south. So uh, what we're recommending tonight is that the board – appoint or reappoint a and uh, director Christensen is currently the member by the way uh, appoint or reappoint a district board member as the primary representative for the district on the JPIA board of directors and it the motion currently reads appoint the general manager to serve as the alt, alt, uh, alternate what we'd like to amend that to be the appoint the general manager the HR manager and the finance and business manager as the alternates and we'll see what works best amongst ourselves if, if a board member decides not to go. Okay. Any public comment on this item? See none, I bring it back to the board. So Carla, what's involved? Uh, it's an early attendance to Aqua. It's uh, on Tuesdays, isn't it? Yeah, and any person who is one of the uh, representatives that particular part of the meeting is not part of Aqua. It's uh, you don't uh, pay a registration fee to just go to that one day of meeting. Um, uh, the role or the position didn't exist until it was Tim Adamson. Tim yeah. 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 Scott uh, came on the board and wanted to be a member of the JPIA and could it without another board member but that's that's oh as far as it went so I didn't make a point of going to it I think it's a good idea to go to it uh, but we do have uh, um, expert I felt like the meeting the meetings that I have gone to I felt like we really have a good knowledge base here on our own at the district with uh, Tracy Hart uh, so it, I did make a point of attending very many of the meetings but mm -hmm. 
Um, it is one of the ways that work and um, um, and another several hundred page uh, packet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Yeah, so it's another a bunch of stuff, but it's all, like, you know, the benefits, insurance, uh, there's a lot of information there that's relevant to the district, but like I said, we have really good representation here already, knowledge of representation. So I, I willing to do it again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to do it again. Okay. I would say uh, anybody who works, I, I would say that perhaps Rochelle and Bruce Jaffe, Rochelle uh, would not be interested because it would take a day of off of work. Off yeah. of work that you already have a lot of responsibilities that you do. Uh, and the other person might be. Dr. Daniels, because you go well, I'm there on Tuesdays. I'm always there on Tuesdays, but the groundwater meeting's in the morning, and then the water management meeting is in the early afternoon, and then water quality is in the late afternoon. So I'm usually busy all Tuesday going to Sounds those. Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Monday, though, and it's Monday of the game. Well, so you'd, you'd be willing to, to do this? Yes, especially then, since the meetings are so close by now. Yeah. yeah. So I don't mind it so much as when it was... Okay. Down, Southern Cal way down Southern California. So I'll, I'll make the motion that you're the primary representative, and that uh, the general manager and Tracy Finance and Business Finance and Business Manager and, and HR, HR Manager as alternate. are alternates as alternates. Okay. I'll yeah. second whatever he said. <laughs> 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 Good enough. All right, roll call yet again, please. Vice President Lather? Yes. Uh, Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes. Thanks for being So, here. item seven is the closed session, which we are not having tonight. If anyone wants to speak on that, this is the time. Actually, I think. So we're not, it's up to the board, we're not required to have public comment on an item that had been um, pulled oh. from the agenda, especially when it was announced at the beginning. Okay. Oh. Well, I don't think we need to do that then. So I think we are done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I really want to thank the board Okay. Well, we're having a meeting in two weeks. You can do it then. Um, we have she wanted the retraction tonight. Okay, well, retract. I want to go back on record with the retraction. Sure. So bring the meeting back in order. Yeah, we're in back in order. Go ahead, retract. And is the, uh, is the recording still going? I have no idea.
I classify in my case management statement that it is a limited case. Ms. Ouellette, knowing that it is not a limited because all CEQA cases, as she knows, but I did, and nowhere in the law is it stated as such, CEQA cases are unlimited cases. Her case management statement rightfully classified it as unlimited. So I want to make clear that in her case management conference statement, she did properly classify it as unlimited. The travesty is that the judge, Judge Gallagher, who heard the case management case, did not even pay attention to the disparity of the two classifications. And therefore, it was not addressed. The judge was negligent in his duty to determine the classification. My understanding was that I was still operating under that law, that definition that it was limited. So when I appealed the case, I took it as is required for limited cases. I took it to the appellate division within the Santa Cruz County Superior Court. And finally, after two further actions, the judge, Judge Wolfman, finally looked and made the decision, as should have been done a long time ago, that it is an unlimited case. And therefore, it is now transferred to the appeals court in San Jose. I do know, however, though, in the cost that Ms. Ouellette has levied against me, over $2,800, she chose to use the limited filing fee. Thank you. So now we're adjourned. I'm adjourned. This is Taj. This is...